Okay, so toast. If you're seeing this, it means that I think I've done something that finally broke the multiverse. I'd say you did. I'd say you did a lot. Oh boy. Welcome to another episode of Void City Reacts. If there is one thing I've been telling Dan for about nine months now, it's that I don't have much to say about McFarland toys that I haven't already said. This is true. So, before we get into these Flash movie figures, um, if I fail to specifically mention it, I feel like the proportions are, are out of whack. They are. The scale from one figure to the next is out of whack. Across the and, whole line. Um, paint is lazy. So, yeah. that said, let's get into it. And I'm going to start with the Flash figure. So this should be the red suit, Ezra Miller, and it looks pretty good. I like the look of it in the trailer. I think um, proportions are wonky. He's got very long legs. He's got a case of high crotch. I think a little bit later we're going to see a case of wide crotch, but we'll get there. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a nice red. Uh, I don't know. I like it better than the Justice League suit, so it's more smooth. I don't know. Um, you can already see in the promotional pictures pictures that the gold should have received another pass because it's the red is bleeding through the gold, so that's not great. No. Um, but it looks fine. It looks. So I guess I'd have to disagree a little bit here. I'm not a fan of this suit necessarily. I'm actually kind of more of a fan of it as a figure. <laughs> than I am of how it looks in the movie. In the movie, I think the way it looks right now makes the suit from Green Lantern look just that much better. It just looks like a weird cartoon red stick figure with Ezra Miller's gigantic floating head on top of it. I don't know, there's just something about the shape of the jawline on the cowl that he's wearing and the way his neck just looks so tiny. I don't know, I'm not a fan of how that suit looks in the movie. And here is a figure. I think it's got a, a strange texture. It kind of looks like spaghetti sauce. It's a decent red, but Toast is right. It needs another pass on that gold. It's kind of uh, it's kind of lame. Same with the, the yellow lines. They're sort of just orange. Maybe that's on purpose. Uh, it just looks kind of kind of strange. I think it looks fine, and I think it looks like Ezra Miller. There's... Yeah. We'll get there again, but... Um... <laughs> As far as, oh, that's another point, by the way, is um, if we're doing across the line, McFarlane live action actor accurateness is non-existent. But this, and I think this has been true for previous Ezra Miller figures, looks like Ezra Miller. I think the likeness is all right. It's one of the only two in the entire line that I think actually possibly come close to looking like the person they're supposed to but we will get to that later on there's likely a lot of reasons why these figures look the way that they do this looks like Ezra Miller the same is not true for the flash in the Batman costume that is I don't know whose jaw that is but that is not Ezra Miller I don't think it's his eyes the whole head does not I think it's Michael Rosenbaum. That said, I do kind of like the look of this. Um, the deep red, I think the proportions are better. The red and black work well together. There's a little dash of yellow. Uh, for both the lightning bolt and the belt, which I think helps. That's another point for later. Um, I kind of like this figure. Maybe I'm alone, but it looks pretty good, again, except for the likeness to Ezra Miller. The problem I have with this, and it's seen in not, you can't see it too well in the pictures on McFarland's site, but on Facebook and I think see a little bit 
in one image, but it's got the Kickstarter spawn style neck into the torso, and it's horrendous. It's stupid. I wish he would stop this. So the neck is only going to look correct in one position, and at that point, why even why bother? Like, what what are you what are you doing, Todd? I don't understand some of the choices that you make sometimes, but. It's a nice red. I like the mix of red and black and uh, little yellow accents thrown in there. Otherwise, it's it's Todd being Todd. So my theory on the neck for this figure is that clearly this guy is wearing a Batman Returns costume that he has spray painted red, which I actually think kind of looks nice on this figure. That's the one thing I'll give it is that the... The paint on it looks kind of sloppy, almost like someone sprayed it on hastily, and that's kind of basically what this is. That looks all right, so I'll, I'll forgive the sloppy paint because I imagine it's probably supposed to be somewhat. The big, goofy Batman head, I mean, it's a big, goofy Batman head in the movie. I expected it to be a big, goofy Batman head on the figure. Toast is right, though. It's, it doesn't really look as much like Ezra as the other Flash figure does. There's just something about the expression and the way it looks. I don't know. It's just very strange. Either way, I think it's also weird that there's a Batman mask without a nose. So clearly he cut the nose off of the Batman Returns mask along with the ears. It just looks kind of funky. But that's, I think, possibly why they went with that neck is because that cowl doesn't turn. So it's kind of all just one big piece, and that's kind of what they've replicated here. So I don't know if it's supposed to be like an in-joke from McFarland Toys, but it is kind of an awful choice, and I also wish he would stop doing that. It, it, it just makes it, like Toes said, only work really from one angle. Otherwise, there's this giant weird gap, and it just looks very strange. And that's kind of the whole reason that cowl doesn't turn, so there shouldn't be a place for it to turn. That said, this might be my second favorite figure of the line just out of amusement sake for the fact that this actually happened. I don't know, I just think it's hilarious. <laughs> let's get to the next one. Speaking of Batman, let's start with the, uh, the Affleck Batman. Toast? Regarding Batman, which I would not have known was supposed to be Affleck unless someone pointed it out to me. Because this head sculpt is another instance. Yeah. I don't know who, <laughs> who this is modeled after. I initially thought, I'm like, oh, it's kind of an Arkham style head, but there's no Affleck visible in this. This is the first um, soft goods cape. There will be another, but um, I think, much like Thigh Swivel, we're only going to get soft good capes sporadically. I don't think anyone that wants soft capes should get their hopes up. Um, the other point is this cape is thin as hell. It's literally see-through. You can see the white coming through. It's not good. It, it looks cheap as shit. Cloth capes can look nice if you do it correctly, if you pay for it, if you're not doing it yourself, if you pay someone else to do it. There are some very fantastic cloth capes out there. This is not one of them. This is cheap Mattel level Masterverse style trash. It's trash. Garbage. As far as colors, I don't care. I don't care if it's supposed to be black and gray it or is. blue. I, I, I don't care. It, um, it's another Batman. It doesn't look great. I do not care in the slightest. Wow. Wow. What I find interesting, though, is the card art. And I'll mention this for the first time. The card looks pretty nice. And the card art on, on some of these... Well, the card art for Batman Costume Flash looks like dirty or he just got lazy spray painting it red. The card art for regular looking Flash looks better than the figure. So, it does. I don't it know really what to make does. That. It does look closer to the movie. Going back to this Affleck Batman for a moment here. So my theory is that I think they got a lot of their designs and whatnot very early on. This would have been like almost two and a half years ago, two years ago, somewhere around there. I mean, this movie's been held back so many times already, reshot, ending redone, 
actors removed, actors added, things changed, all kinds of stuff. These designs would have gone out forever ago. And the funny thing to me is, is that the head sculpt on this looks a lot like the stunt driver that was driving in those motorcycles shots that we saw from behind the scenes stuff. And I think that's kind of hilarious if that's what that actually is. Anyways, that being said, I think it's an okay Batman figure. I would like to know the purpose of all the weird armor pieces he's got on the suit. I'm sure it's bad guy specific. I mean, a lot of people forget that that kind of is Batman's thing as he has all sorts of different suits for different situations. It lends itself very well to different action figures. But I agree that cape, even though it's a soft goods cape, which is nice, it's kind of garbage. It looks like a black paper towel. So, I don't know. I, I would be replacing that in a heartbeat if I got this figure. That's a big if. A big if. And that's me, the guy who gets like all of these things, saying that. So, yeah. Let's uh, check out that Keaton Batman. What's he look like? Oh, good God. Toast? What do you say? Keaton Batman looks. Uh, wait, his shins are yellow? What? This is another instance of a cloth cape that you can see through, again, in the promotional images. And it, I wish it had a yellow belt. Otherwise, it looks Keaton Batman ish, except modernized with some more lines. I, I don't know. I don't have much to say. I might have more to say if I could better see the proportions, if it weren't completely black. It's a nice size cape. Like, you can see in one of the images that it's flared out, and at least there's some additional material. But, I don't... I, it doesn't have a stupid neck, so his head can move, but... Uh, the belt should have been yellow. And I don't understand why the boots are faded yellow. That looks terrible. I don't know. Torso looks okay. I don't understand why he's got shoulder pads now. Whatever. Look, I'm probably not buying any of these. <laughs> yeah, I figured as much. Yeah, this figure is... This figure is a prime example here. Let it be known right now, I hate Keaton's new bat suit. I absolutely hate it. Uh, like Toast, I am wondering very much why the boots on this figure have this very strange brushed on, like dry brushed yellow color to them. It doesn't look like brown. It looks straight up like a yellow that's been thinned out. It's very, very odd. I don't understand yellow boots on Batman, but a black belt. Uh, like Toast, I believe the belt should have still been yellow or at least gold. And other than that, I mean, the torso, the entire torso looks like they just took it from a Batman Begins suit and put a different logo on it. I mean, the, the abs are almost identical. It's ridiculous. Like, the whole suit just looks like someone got lazy and took most of the bat, like a blank Batman Begins suit and stapled some Keaton-ish things onto it. I hate the way the cowl looks like it's attached to the cape. All oh, there's just too busy. There's too much going on around there. I don't get it. I especially hate the opening for Keaton's mouth. It looks even goofier than it did in any scene where he's sitting in a vehicle and Batman returns and there's giant gaps around the sides of his cheeks. I think it looks ridiculous. Like, I don't even think Keaton looks like Keaton in the trailer, much less on this figure. So I think the fact that this figure doesn't quite look like Keaton necessarily is accurate because the Batman in the trailer doesn't look like Keaton half the time. In the trailer, 99% of the time, he's computer animated. Unless he's standing still or walking three steps in a straight line in the suit, he's not real. It's a cartoon. So, you know, that's what happens when Batman's 72 years old. And as far as the shoulder pads go, I think we realized, you know, once you put him up next to Affleck, who's like six foot four and gigantic, Keaton... Little itty bitty tiny Batman he used to look a little bit bigger compared to these other heroes. You can't have Flash be almost as buff as Batman. That would be weird. So let's make him look a little bit bigger with these big shoulder pads. That's what I think is happening there. I really don't get the belt being black. I don't understand it. That's strange. I don't like it. And I don't like the ears on this figure, how the tops are kind of like thick and rounded off. I don't, I don't know. They look like... 
I, I don't like it. The only thing I really like is the size of the cape. I think that's kind of nice, but it's another one you can see through. So I'd have to change it out anyways, if I ever were to get this figure. But you know, we, we shall see. I don't know about that. Let's take a look at uh, Supergirl here. This is going to be, mm, I, uh, I don't know about this. Oof, okay, uh, toast. Supergirl, she looks good in the movie. The figure does not look great. And a lot of that is the head, but this is a vastly superior Supergirl to the Injustice. I hate that costume. I hate the head. I hate essentially everything about that figure. I don't immediately and literally hate everything about this, but the head has to go. She has a case of granny panties. <laughs> that crotch piece is inexcusable. I saw someone in a Facebook group mention um, wishing that Todd would return to the Fortnite style hip crotch piece, and I agree with that. I don't know why. The only thing I can think of is he was trying to eliminate the the hip gap. Yeah, there's a weird. So between the the upper thigh and the the crotch itself, there there was a gap there that I guess if you have a soft overlay, you don't have a gap, but you generally like uh, it's arguably worse. I don't know. I think the arms are very thin, although that is probably, I mean, it's, I haven't talked about the movie yet, and I will in just a moment, but given how much of it is based on Flashpoint, it makes sense that this would be a thin Supergirl if she was in confinement for years, decades, whatever the case may be. Um, I just think it's probably actress likeness. She's just very thin and again card art looks fantastic it has some additional blue elements makes it look a bit more like cavill suit and they attempted to do something similar on the figure but the blues are wrong so the blues just wind up blending into each other rather than accenting and highlighting yeah. so i don't know her feet look very flat at least she comes with a stand down and two hands so uh, accessory wise that is nice I think she's winning it. That is an interesting one for me. I like the suit in the movie. It is based on the Cavill suit because it comes from that same type of universe. Just she came to Earth instead of Kal El. You know, it's part of this version of Flashpoint. That being said, the likeness I think is pretty terrible. But in this case, that might be just the fact that it's painted like a WWE basic figure, so just not good at all. You're going to want someone who could repaint this and make it look like it should, and then it might bring out her actual likeness from the sculpt. It's not always. I'm not going to say it's all the time, but often with McFarlane sculpts, when people say it doesn't look like the actor, if it got proper paint, it would look just like the actor. The sculpt is fine. It's just the paint is cheap and not as good as it should be. In other cases, that's not the fact at all. Example would be the unmasked John Cena Peacemaker action figure. <laughs> it kind of looks more like Robert Patrick now, but imagine if Robert Patrick was having an allergic reaction to shellfish and then also got stung in the face by some bees. That's kind of what that unmasked figure looks like. Doesn't look like John Cena. That being said, I think maybe this one could be rescued with different paint, but that is to be seen. What I hate about this figure is its cape. It does not have a soft goods cape. It has a regular plastic cape and it is huge. I hate how it's connected in the back. It just looks goofy. There's just a little spot where it comes out like right by her shoulder blades and it, it just looks, uh, it looks so weird. And it's just, with the fact that it's so huge, I mean, without this stand, I don't think this figure has a chance in hell of standing up on its own. I, unless it's leaning backwards and using the cape to like rest upon, I really don't think this figure could stand up by itself. I'd be very, very surprised if it can. I can appreciate that it comes with an extra set of hands. That's pretty cool. I wish more McFarland figures would do that. Oh boy, look who's next. It's Dark Flash. Oh, I 
can't wait to hear about this one. Dark Flash. So, Dark Flash. The thing about Dark Flash is I'm confused about him having a figure, but Zod, who's all over the trailer, does not. So Dark Flash isn't in the trailer at all. I hope he's minimally in the movie. I hope this isn't... There's already a lot of ground to cover as far as the movie goes. Like, it has to do a lot. I wonder what the runtime is going to be, but... I hope Dark Flash is more like a black dog sort of element that appears in backgrounds. He's sort of a looming threat that um, there's probably going to be some speech to resolve the issue. But um, I, in <laughs> if I were writing the movie, um, I would have Barry doing everything that he's seen to be doing that he needs to do in order to, to tell the story. But um, I would have him almost hallucinating this dark flash as a representation of like internally knowing that even what he's attempting to do can't succeed it won't succeed it will ultimately fail and this is sort of um is his name black racer sort of um character i almost called him racer x but you know sort of a, a looming threat almost subconscious level I guess he's not even really a threat. He's more of a, an, an acknowledgement that Barry needs to undo what he has done, which he knows, but I just hope this character is not main. And the only other thing I have to say about Dark Flash is I had previously had a thought about turning a haunt figure into a custom carnage. And I think if I combine the two between Dark Flash and haunt, I would have basically all I need to do a carnage. Again, this is not a figure I will ever purchase. Zero interest. <laughs> so Dark Flash, um, I just want to throw this out here right now. I think he looks like someone who got splashed with a bunch of melted garbage bags and then a tornado blew a bunch of pieces of a wooden fence through his body because there's like shards sticking out of his arms but like going all the way through and stuff. There's been a lot of talk about how this guy hasn't been featured in any trailers at all. And like Toast, I, I very much agree. I kind of hope he's very minimally featured in this film. And I have a feeling he will only show up at the very end. That said, back to the thing about people saying he's not featured in the trailer at all. I think he's all over the trailer. I think he's everywhere in the trailer. I think he's the other Alan. Whatever happens to defeat Zod, I think this is something that's going to be the result of that and it's going to turn him into this guy that's just my thought i i don't know it just seems to make sense to me i don't know unless it's some insane accident that happens that like splashes something gross all over him when zod's ship goes down or phantom zone drive explodes i don't know what's going to happen i just know that it looks strange there's some like yellowish brownish hair sticking out the top which is interesting to me if that is even what that is and then there's also like a yellowish brownish splash across the chest which is probably supposed to mimic the lightning bolt but again that makes me feel like there was a flash suit underneath that at some point whatever happened to this guy it looks bad it doesn't look like a suit it looks like something happened to him i think that's what all that slag that's probably slag coming off of his back because he was probably running when he got splashed with something and it's probably formed into like spikes off his back i don't know i'm just making up things based on what i'm seeing here but wouldn't it be hilarious if I'm right about this? This movie comes out in, like, when, November or something? I don't even know anymore. They keep moving around so much. But anyway, yeah, this guy, he looks very much just like he is in pain because something splashed all over him that's gross. Again, this is not a figure I will ever purchase. And lastly, there is the unmasked gold label Target exclusive Keaton Batman. And Dan mentioned, he'll probably mention it again, sort of a Kiefer Sutherland look, which, uh, I don't know, it's kind of a hybrid Keaton Sutherland. I will not be buying this either. Again, you can literally see through the cape and the promotional images, which is not great. It just shows how cheap the material is. Card art looks nice. Also doesn't look like Keaton. And the card art has the weirdest thing. So the... <laughs> 
the cod piece on this is just enormous. I don't understand. I don't know who's drawing these things, but uh, the figure does not have that large of a crotch. The proportions look pretty good, though. And again, yellow shins. What is happening with this? It might be a good base if you replace the cape, like so many other Necronic figures require, but repaint those boots, too. And the belt. I mean, if... And the promotional images, it looks like one of his eyes is looking off to the side. One, one looks to be straight, and the other one's off to the side. I don't know what's up with that, either, but it's, it's not great. Yeah, so the unmasked Keaton figure... This is another one where, looking at it, I just, I cannot tell. I don't know, it just looks very strange, along with, like, the the way the hair is colored, at least on this figure, it looks like he has very light blonde hair, when I think it should be white. So I think repainting even the hair white would help this figure a lot, because having it be blonde makes it look like he's a whole different person, along with his bad paint. This might be able to be saved by paint. I can see a little bit of the Michael Keaton lip thing going on there and the eyebrows. It's just it's painted terribly. Uh, like Toast said, one of the eyes does appear to be aiming a little bit more sideways than the other one. And I thought we were getting away from the side eyes, but whatever. It doesn't even look like him necessarily. I thought Kiefer Sutherland at first, uh, and mostly, again, that's some of the blonde hair. He looks like the way he looked in The Lost Boys. But now, looking at this guy, I, I see... The guy who was the, the bad guy in Walking Tall with The Rock. Uh, what was his name? Neil McDonough? I'm probably saying that wrong. Uh, I'll show him up on here, but I think it looks like that guy now. I don't know. It, it just doesn't... Keaton has such a specific face, and there's been so many action figures of him that capture it perfectly, and I don't get what the problem here was necessarily, other than it just has to be bad paint, and I'm hoping it's just bad paint. That being said, this figure's design just makes me want to throw up. Again, even more reason to hate this bat suit. If that's what it looks like when the cowl comes off, like why does it look like he's wearing a medal that he just ran like a 5K and he got a Batman medal for it? What is that big goofy strap around his neck? Like what? Why? That just looks so dumb. It's not... Ah, oh, it just looks so dumb. I really, I really don't like it. Somehow his whole neck being visible and not having like... It just... That looks so stupid. It's the Batman Begins suit again, but with like a black Michael Keaton belt that just, again, looks, why is it black? That's so stupid. Uh, that's one thing I do like about this figure is it comes with extra hands and extra accessories. So they've got the grapple and the battering. That's cool. But why are they silver? It's so strange. Again, I like the cape size, but it's the see-through cape again, so we'd probably have to switch it out anyways. This is another one of those ones where I'm really, really, really hoping that this is a McFarlane Toys photographer fuck up and we will get far better looking figures in real life when we see them on the shelf. We'll see it and we'll be like, oh, that's actually not that bad. I mean, it won't change the horrible design of the suit from the movie because it just looks terrible. I hate this suit. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. But maybe the figure, at least the likeness will look a little bit better. I don't know. I just, I do not know. At least with some paint and a little bit of dremeling and some more paint, you could probably turn this into a decent Batman Returns figure. There you go. Put a little scratch on his face, paint his neck black, then it looks like he tore his cowl off, paint his hair brown. There you go. Talk about customizing Toast. You can, uh, you can make your Carnage, which I think you're right. Those two figures combined, if they match up, should make a pretty awesome Carnage. I just worry that Haunt might be a bit bigger than dark flash given the size difference between dc multiverse and spawn except for the batman hush figure which is humongous because i'm pretty sure they're going to pair it with a spawn figure uh, that said anyways i don't know uh, this figures in general especially this i don't know like you think they're going to sell out I, I keep seeing people on facebook talking about them selling out but i mean i just i'm so disappointed with how so many of them look no no just, no I'm sure we'll see some of these on the shelf eventually. I mean, do you think they'll be peg warmers or...? I imagine most of this is going to sell out because McFarlane is doing less um, quantity. He's producing less of each figure than he had been in the past. And, you know, people are snapping these things up. Good on them if they like it. Ah, I'm skipping this whole wave unless I find a reason to buy any of it to customize into something else. I don't care. Fair enough. I'll watch the movie. 
I hope it'll be good. Me too. But these figures do absolutely nothing for me, and there's really no sign in any of this. Affleck Batman has birthing hips. Like, the... Oh. His waist to hip ratio is off the goddamn charts. Like, this is it's fucking insanity. Anyway, that's that's my take on this, for what it's worth. All right, might as well just hang up on me, I guess. Um, nah, whatever. We got things to do. I gotta get to work. Affleck's hip ratio is like that for the same reason he has thigh swivel. He's got to fit on that gigantic fat motorcycle, which we will get to at some point. But that would be why he looks in part the way he does. I imagine we'll see some of these on the shelf. I also imagine we'll see at first some of them fly out of the shelf. Again, while we're in Illinois and we don't tend to see a lot of these things on the shelf ever, I guess we'll see. I guess we will see. I also have not pre-ordered any of these guys. I'll take my chances on the shelf. I want to see them in person first, especially the unmasked versions. I'm sure I'll get the Batman figures at the very least, the masked ones. Like I said, Keaton doesn't look like Keaton to me in the movie, so the fact that the figure doesn't quite look like Keaton doesn't quite bother me because it's still a terrible suit, but I, it's Batman. And, you know, it was the first VHS movie I think I ever saw. I wasn't allowed to see it in the theater. I was too young at uh, six years old. I did get to see Ninja Turtles the following year, and that movie was, like, mind-blowing. I hope I feel that way again when I see the Flash movie. I hope it's awesome, just like Toast does. And I'm more excited for that than anything. I still think most of the designs from the movie look terrible. I think Affleck's suit probably looks the best besides Supergirl's. But I still would like to know what the purpose is. And it would be kind of interesting to get another version of this figure down the line, maybe with a different head and also with a blue paint job. Gold label, platinum version. I've seen that platinum Jay Garrick out there. Ooh, that thing is nice. I guess that's pretty much been it for this episode of Void City Reacts. Uh, that was Toast. I am Dan. Uh, let us know what you guys think of these figures. Did you guys pre-order them? Uh, are you on the fence? Do you want to see them first? Do you want to see the movie first? What do you think about the likenesses? You know, sometimes it surprises me there's figures at all because it kind of surprises me that there's a movie at all. It could have been canceled. So until next time, thanks for watching. And the whole set. Let's hope Toast does not find out about this one. You pre-ordered those figures, didn't you? You just broke the multiverse. <laughs>